Hi, I'm Kathy Thomas. Chef restaurateur Alessandro Perosi knows how to serve Branzino at its very best. The European sea bass combines with different ingredients in each of his restaurants, but one of my favorites is his Branzino al piatto. He's here to show us how to prepare it. Welcome, Alessandro. It's so nice to have you here. Nice to see you, Kathy. Yeah. So while I've been to this kitchen, I'm glad yes. to get back again. Welcome back. Thank and you. and you're going to do al piatto. What does that mean? Well, piatto, the word description is actually cook in the plate. It's a technique that we use in the south of Italy, Naples especially, which we actually cook the food in the plate. We don't have to transfer. It's a very simple, easy way, especially for cooking the fish. Simple, amazing, and very easy to do it. And may I add, delicious. And delicious. Let's get started. It can be done with many different fishes. If the fish is thick, can be filleted out and butterfly to make thinners. Or you can use Branzino, which they call Loop de Mer. It's just a sea bass family skin on. We remove the skin. We're gonna actually pound on the fish. So we start with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, so the fish don't gonna stick inside. Then, so this, this is the side the skin was on. Yeah, the side of the skin yeah. is on, which we remove it. We just a little bit more olive oil on both sides, and then just with another piece of sarandi wrap on top of it, we're just gonna actually cover it. We have in a commercial big ham, but we can use anything. <laughs> when I don't have anything, I use a pan, a little yeah, pan, so I just I. did it. Yeah. Actually, I start also with the hands, you know, just pan yeah. it because the fit is gentle. The, if you use a cooking hammer, it has two sides. So the smaller side first is actually kind of like tenderize the fish. And then on the flat side, mm. you know, just like going back and forth between, and the fish can start to open it up and become nice and thin. And are you doing this so it'll cook really quickly? It cooks very quickly, and the less it cook, the more tender and butterness come. And it's very easy to cook, because you can pre-do this ahead, leave it in the plate, when the guests come, up to whatever many people, and they're gonna have these amazing fish cooking three minutes. Then we take one of the two paper and remove it. We left the back side like this. We take in the plate, it's the easy things that we can do. You put your hands underneath, ah. and very simple, go right down, and then, very gentle, voila, fish is ready. <laughs> Pretty you easy, know what? isn't it? Everybody can do this. It's easy, All right. it's easy, and actually, after it's drizzling like this, a very light, gentle oil, very gentle. Mm -hmm. No salt, no nothing at this stage. Just on top of it, and in the broil, a couple minutes until the fish turn from a this nice goldish color to a white. And we see how. And we've got the broiler preheated, pre and we've got the rack about six inches below the broiler element. So yes. it's ready to go. We do a little thing, we just kind of like open a little bit in the middle, and if it's still, the color is still a little bit pinkish, we do, we flip it around, and we put it back in for another less than a minute. So, fish should be ready. So simple. So, facile, facile. Facile, facile. So, we lay on a towel like this, and we always start with something that's gonna give it the flavors. In this case, we're gonna use the Calabrian chili oil. Spicy Calabrian chili, you know, I love this. I, I put love it anywhere. It. This is a little spicy, so we contrast with a little bit of sweet. And these little tear drop pepper, they are marinated. And aren't they sweet? Oh, they're sweet. Yeah. And then they have a little, like, a little nutty after flavors. They're yeah. just gorgeous. Oh, they're gorgeous. Plus, they look so cute. Then, one of my favorite secret ingredients, if I'm able to make a liquid, I will put it in my vein. The black <laughs> lava salt. So when you get in a little salt in your mouth, you just get an explosion of flavor. Then we have this little, like, you know, new ingredient. They are pearls of olive oil. So it's kind of like, you know, when they touch the mouth, mm -hmm. they actually just explode in and they have that little olive oil flavors. I know lots of chefs actually make these, yes. but it looks like you bought them. Yes, I bought these because they're tiny. The smaller, the uh -huh. harder to make. The they bigger, are. the easy. I also like to have a little bit of fennel pollen, uh, almost kind of like exotic flavors of uh, spice that you don't recognize and say, what is that? Lemon juice, I don't like to put a lot of them. I just literally just like to drizzle a little bit of it to contrast it. Then when it will be a creaminess, so what do we do? We add a little bit of avocado, okay? Then I love to put rainbow carrots. I like to put it on the plate, different colors, you know, the, the purple, the yellow, mm -hmm. more like kind of like a decorations. I like also the little teardrop. Mm -hmm. 
tomato, and also I like to put it on the plate. I like to put it on top of it. If they want the acidity to put it on, or just leave it like this. Alessandro, on it looks like a painting. <laughs> it's so you know pretty. Me. Yeah, I always so say, pretty. you need to taste like it look, and look like it tastes. That's right. This is actually is micro arugula, and so what I do, I just kind of like sprinkle on top of it, just like to have a little bit of that extra kind of like flavors. A touch of black pepper, I just go, let's say, very simple. <laughs> they just barely nothing. Then Got it. this organic, you know, confetti flour, which is kind of like this, has become like the new parsley of the future because they're fresh herbs, but they look gorgeous. Just to end up with a little watermelon radish. You know, colorful, nice cube. People wondering, what is that beautiful decorator? And Senora, that's it. Carpaccio al piatto. It's so gorgeous, and I know how delicious it is. <laughs> it's so simple. Thank you, Alessandro. It's such fun to cook with I you. I love to cook for you. I can read this out every day. <laughs> Grazie. Buon appetito, everybody. Enjoy. <laughs> Here's a quick tip for Melissa's. Chopped Greek salad is a favorite. And with the addition of chicken, it quickly turns into a meal. Let's start by making the dressing, and it's very easy and it's very perky. So let's start with about a third of a cup of red wine vinegar. We're going to add a little garlic salt and a little freshly ground black pepper. I'm going to give that a little stir with a whisk to dissolve the salt. Usually the proportions of olive oil to uh, vinegar are such that it's e either even or there's more olive oil than there is vinegar. But in this perky Greek dressing, we want a little bit more of the vinegar than the oil. So about a quarter of a cup of olive oil. Some minced fresh oregano or basil. Some slivered red onion. I love Kalamata olives, and these have been cut in half lengthwise. And I always like to make them a little bit more perky by adding some minced uh, orange zest to the jar. It just gives them a, a nice fragrance. So in go the olives. We want some uh, chopped romaine lettuce. The easiest way to chop it is to just simply cut it in half, and then to cut the half in half so we have quarters. Leave it connected at one end and just simply slice it like so. so. We want about, oh, maybe six cups cucumbers. So I've just zebraed this, which means that I've taken off half the peel in long strips, and I'm just going to cut it into half moon shaped slices. Let's take a look at this beautiful vine ripened tomato. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And I have a serrated knife here. I think that makes the, the slicing and chopping easier. And I'm going both horizontal and vertically. And then the cooked chicken, just torn or chopped into pieces. We're going to give it a toss. I usually do this in the sink. And this certainly wouldn't be a Greek salad without some crumbled feta cheese. Now I'm gonna add one thing that I really like that really isn't very Greek, but I have some croutons here that I just toasted up. I like the crunch that the croutons bring. Easy, delicious, goes together quickly, and it's dinner. The produce aisles are filled with so many delicious choices. Try something new, have an adventure,